How much do you need? All of it. Thank you. Here we go. Hmm? All right. Like this with a smile. <clears throat> That's you. That's me. Although I'm not so sure anymore. Here we go. <sighs> go on. Cry for help. Cry for help. Help? Oh, pathetic. No, cry for help. Help! You mean it, boy. Help! From your diaphragm! Help! 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 Shh, 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 shh. Now we listen. Nothing. I'm afraid they're not coming for you, buddy. <laughs> It's an honor to meet you, son of Mohan. I'm amazed you made it all the way here on your own. Hey folks, Dave, the not-so-evil Evil Viking 13 here with some first impressions of Far Cry 4 for you guys. A couple of words of warning to start things off. When I played my first few hours here in-game, I did not have access to the new NVIDIA drivers that actually support Far Cry 4. They had not come out yet. So I was getting some occasional graphical issues with certain combinations of graphic settings here on PC. And to get around that, I had to edit a couple of patch files and move some configurations around off of the Ultra settings. But for the most part, I was able to set my graphics to Ultra and maintain 40 to 60 FPS. Not bad for a game that has no official driver support yet. I will definitely come back and revisit graphics once the graphics driver is actually out and the game is supported. But for now, let's take a look at Far Cry 4 just in general. I am coming into this as a huge fan of Far Cry 3. I think I played around 90 or more hours in Far Cry 3. I beat the entire game and all of the outposts. And my first impressions of Far Cry 4 were that it was kind of more like Far Cry 3.5. A lot of the animations even feel the same. It's definitely Ubisoft's traditional open world game formula where you have uh, your sections of the map that are hidden, you climb some kind of tower and you unlock them. There are side missions and upgrades you can do. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, Far Cry 3 was an excellent, excellent game and a great port of the PC version too. I think what people are expecting, at least myself included, out of Far Cry 4 is more of the same but improved and uh, maybe a bit deeper. One thing that I was actually a bit concerned about for Far Cry 4 was could they top Voss as a bad guy uh, from Far Cry 3? Voss stands out as probably one of my favorite video game bad guys of all time. He was well animated, his voice acting was excellent, and he had this unique personality that uh, really pushed the storyline along. My worries about the antagonist of Far Cry 4 did not last long though because he is actually really, really interesting. His name is Pagan Min, and from the start of the game, he is a really fascinating character. Once again, really well voice acted and compelling. You don't necessarily hate him, even though he's obviously a psychopath, but you want to just learn more about him. I'm only a few hours into the story, so I don't know a whole lot about him besides what you see in the beginning of the game, but I definitely have that drive to find out more, and I think is not going to be an issue to continue my interest in the main characters. Even your character is a bit interesting. You're not quite the lost tourist that you were in Far Cry 3. Uh, you're kind of taking a more realistic look at things as you enter the game. And you get into the action pretty quickly without too many issues. Uh, I imagine when you enter your parents' homeland and are met with gunfire immediately, and you've heard their war stories, I'm sure, it would be pretty easy to kind of dive into the thick of things. So yeah, you're definitely not as helpless as your character, uh, named AJ, as you were in Far Cry 3. Putting Pig on Min aside for a second, let's talk more about AJ. You enter the country with a goal of spreading your mother's ashes at one of the mountains in Kirat. It's one of her dying wishes, and it's very heavily implied that she had some ulterior motives to asking you to do that because the mountain where she's asking you to go to spread her ashes is deep within territory that's held by the forces of Pagan Min. That simple request immediately puts you in the center of the civil war in Karat. 
I don't want to say much more about the characters or the story because I believe that in a game like this where the single player narrative is pretty good and pretty compelling, that you shouldn't have too much spoiled unless you just want to watch a Let's Play, in which case I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of those dropping very, very soon. I want to talk a bit more about the mechanics. As I already mentioned, Far Cry 4 shares a lot of things with Far Cry 3, and as someone who put a lot of hours into Far Cry 3, all the mechanics were instantly familiar to me. There's of course the towers that have the radio beacon at the top that you can capture to open up new missions, unlock new weapons, and open up areas of the map. That's very, very familiar. You still have your hand gliders, your ATVs, your civilian trucks and jeeps and vans and that sort of thing. Even your weapons are pretty standard fare for Far Cry. There's a lot of holdovers from Far Cry 3, your classic AK, uh, your Uzi submachine guns. A lot of those weapons are very similar, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, there can only be so many modern weapons, but like I said, it all just seems very, very familiar. Like last time, you also have some upgrade options for your weapons, different camos and silencers and other accessories that you can unlock. And of course, you can only carry a couple of weapons at a time, or in the case of the beginning of the game, only one weapon at a time. You have to actually go out and do some hunting and some crafting and craft new holsters and packs to carry more loot, more guns, and even just your sidearm. One of my favorite parts about the weapon system in Far Cry 3 was actually having to choose my favorite weapons to take along with me. I couldn't just do a loadout with everything from RPGs to the very quiet bow and arrow. And that exact same system is back in Far Cry 4. There does seem to be a lot more animals to hunt. I saw a wide variety even in my short time in free room in the game. And it looks like that that's going to increase the amount of things you can craft and then upgrade as well. Hunting, especially with a bow and arrow, remains a lot of fun. And you never know when animals are going to just turn the tables on you. Elephants are pretty terrifying and a single elephant let loose out of a pen is enough to wipe out an entire outpost if they're not careful. One of my favorite moments in game so far was when I was actually attacking my first enemy outpost held by the government forces. There was an elephant in a pen and I kept trying to use an arrow to knock the gate open but they just weren't powerful enough. I couldn't find that sweet spot to knock the gate open. I was trying to figure out how can I get this elephant to rampage through the camp. I wasted a few more arrows on the gate, the gate still would not open, and then I thought about it for a second, turned my cursor, and shot an arrow right into the rump of the elephant, who howled, and then charged out of the pen, and started smashing the camp, and he ended up taking out almost the entire camp by himself. It was awesome! Like, I just love that little bit of problem solving where the game mechanics in this just sandbox mode really just worked, it just made sense. You do have to watch out though, because like I said, those animals can definitely turn the tables on you. I ran across a honey badger and figured, oh, he's small, he won't be an issue. Oh man, is he fast and vicious. I had like a huge fight with my bow and arrow and my machete and this stupid honey badger. I can definitely see why these guys have their own internet meme. So that's the basics for Far Cry 4. It is a lot of the same. and. If you weren't super thrilled with Far Cry 3, maybe you got bored about halfway through, I definitely wouldn't pick up Far Cry 4 at the full $60 asking price at this point. I got my code for free with my new GTX 970, so I was going to be checking it out either way. And even as a Far Cry 3 fan, I might have been a little bit bummed out at just how similar the games are. I don't really want to complain too much about the similarity because, like I already said, Far Cry 3 was just such a great game. But on the other hand, it has only been two years, and maybe it was just a little bit soon to release a game that is so similar. On the other hand though, I have not yet tried the co-op mode. That is one thing that Joel and I are very, very excited about. It allows you to do the free roam missions, the outpost attacks, the hunting the animals, all that kind of thing with a friend in co-op, but not the main story missions. That was one of our biggest wishes from Far Cry 3 was just all these awesome mechanics, but together in co-op. It is only two players, but we're really, really looking forward to trying it out. Finally, to wrap things up for these first impressions, I want to talk just briefly about graphics. For the most part, the graphics are running really, really well. I'm getting a good frame rate. The game does look good. And like I said, it's not even officially supported yet by the driver. That's pretty impressive, especially given Assassin's Creed Unity's really rough launch uh, last week. 
The game does have an impressive number of options, both for the UI and the individual graphics options on PC, and there are even some very interesting NVIDIA-specific graphics options, including some very nice volumetric god rays or light shafts, and an amazing looking fur shader for animals. It adds a kind of fuzzy fur to them, and while it's not quite, you know, pre-rendered uh, CGI quality, it is just real time in a game, it's pretty convincing, especially from a distance. If you're not careful though, in the graphics options, right now with no driver support, there are definitely a number of combinations that can cause some weird artifacting and weird behavior in your game, including either ambient occlusion, uh, corner shadows that bleed through all objects being rendered, weird ghosting motion blur, or solid black shadows. If you get any of these issues before the drivers come out, just do some googling. A lot of people have found good combos in the graphics options to help avoid them. I won't say that Far Cry 4 is a massive crowning achievement over Far Cry 3. I actually think that in a lot of cases Far Cry 3 might look better, but I'm going to hold final judgment until there's official driver support and I can play around with those ultra options with no uh, weird errors going on. Either way, right now, the game does look good and it's very enjoyable to run around in the environment of Karat. I hope you guys have enjoyed this first look at Far Cry 4. I will have more impressions coming as I play more and as more updates come out. And I will definitely be showing you guys co-op once Joel and I jump in. We are super excited about that. As always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you on the next video.